is not running through it at this particular moment. Mike Scott Plumbing. All right, thank you. Uh, 20 minutes after 10 o'clock, and it uh, looks a little overcast out there. Do you know, I, I, uh, one, of, one of my, you know, I was watching uh, this, this thing on uh, TV, and Larry David, the uh, comedian, the, the writer, um, was, was helping uh, to raise funds for an environmental group that was you know, saving the planet, basically. And, and he, he was funny. He says, I don't, I don't normally do things that save the planet, but when I found out that tuna fish <laughs> were in trouble, I, I, can't, I can't live without tuna fish. So he's, he's uh, lending his hand. So in a funny way, he kind of made a really good point. I, you know, I also love tuna fish. Captain Dave Marciano is on the phone. You know, when you open that can of tuna, you don't realize how much work went into that. Uh, Captain Marciano is a commercial commercial fisherman and the captain of the ship Hard Merchandise on National Geographic's Wicked Tuna television series. You might have seen him uh, on the North Atlantic Bluefin Tuna season. I think that's what we're talking about, right? Uh, good morning, Captain yes, Marciana. How are you? Good, thank you. Yourself? Yeah, good morning. I'm good. Hey, we don't really appreciate all the work that you guys put into that little can of tuna, do we? Oh, right. And, yeah, and, and actually, too, like the, the fish that most of you guys are familiar with, tuna in a can, are a completely different species of tuna. They're generally albacore tuna, much smaller than the ones we get. You know, they probably get 10 or 15 pounds as opposed to a 1,000 pounds like the giant bluefin tuna oh, wow. that we target here in New England. Yeah. Wow, I had no so idea. Most, most, yeah, and, and the fish... <laughs> These giant tuna that we pursue, uh, their primary um, market is for the sushi market. Um, and whether it's in the U domestic in the U.S. or you know our largest market is the Asian market in Japan. Is that right? And, and you and you you are off the coast of New England. Yes, sir. Oh wow! Who knew? I had no idea. And so that the the, the tuna you get in a sushi is is the uh, large tuna that you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, for the most part. I mean, there's many different species of tuna, but these bluefin tuna, these giant bluefin tuna, Atlantic giant bluefin tuna, they're, they're, they're prized for their sushi quality. When you guys were first approached to, to have a TV show, I mean, uh, like now, you're, <laughs> you're coming up on your 100th episode, but in the beginning, were you happy yeah. about that, or did you think, oh, gosh, we're going to have TV cameras here? But, well, look, no, it was... Um, it was, you know, it was it was a no-brainer, really. Look, we're going to go out and fish. That's what we do for work. Right. They wanted to put cameras on the boat look over our shoulder. <laughs> At the end of the season, right. it wasn't a lot of money, but it was like, it was, you know, like getting a check for three or four fish that we didn't catch, right? So it wasn't a lot of money, but for us working guys, it was like four weeks of bonus money, and that's how I looked at it. Sure, we'll take the extra money. Not in a million years did I think that would lead to Sunday night uh, with our 100th episode airing um, at 9 p.m. on the National Geographic Time, uh, National Geographic Channel, Eastern Time. Uh, and, you know, it's been a wild ride. This is the finale episode for um, season seven. Oh, wow. So did you guys, like, become buddies with the, with the TV crew? Oh, yeah. They've become very good friends over the years after this many seasons, for okay. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, and we don't have the same um, the same camera operators on the boat every year, but it's generally the same creep, crew of people overall we work with season after season. Oh, wow. And and do you think it's fun for them? It's, from the outside looking in, it looks like it would be a fun experience. I mean, for you, it's work. But I, I, I'm just trying yeah. to imagine, yeah? Yeah, no, I, I think they. I think we all try and make it fun. Uh, and after all, for all of us, it's a job. Uh, look, for, for, for them to film the show, they're making a paycheck. Right, and for right, us right. being uh, subjects of the show, you know, uh, we're making an extra paycheck. So it's kind of, you know, a thing. We, we wind up having a lot of fun working together, trying to create something that people will enjoy. It's kind of a really neat experience. Oh, wow. It, it does sound fun. Now, w where does the name Wicked Tuna come from? I, I think you were on before, and I, th ah. I think I asked you this, but I just don't remember. Right. Right, right. No, and, and I think, you know, the original title of the show, when it all started, the concept, uh, they had a title, I think it was Blue Gold, right? Uh, and that's what they were thinking. You know, the fish are worth money almost as much as gold, right? Right, right, right. And then after hearing us all talk here in New England, 
uh, they heard that word wicked come a few times. Um, <laughs> and, you know, that, that they decided to go with that for a name because um, that ties it to a Boston, you know, wicked seems to be a Boston thing or a New England thing. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And, you know, after all, that's what they were trying to bring people's attention to is this whole New England area. So, so how how do we, uh-huh. as viewers of the show, um, we under uh-huh. we we get to we get to see chances to see how you do what you do. Have you ever had viewers write to you and say, "I changed the way I go fishing because of your show"? Um, no, no, but through through emails, you know, we have a public email. You know, I oftentimes get people telling me everything that I'm doing wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I wonder what they do for a living, and they, they can tell you what you do. Right, right, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so, all right. So uh, I, I want to make sure the listeners know that this is a show, the one hundredth episode, but not the. You're not done with it, right? You're going to continue doing this, right? No. Oh no, no, no. Now, what's important about this one hundredth episode is there's a big reveal coming up at the end of the episode, which ties into the first episode of the spin-off show Wicked to the North South which airs the following Sunday uh, July 1st at um, 9 p.m. on the National Geographic channel and you know that that the whole big reveal at this uh, final episode all ties in to the new season for the Southern show that's filmed in the Outer Banks North Carolina oh okay so the, the tuna come this far south or not not as far as Florida yeah do they, they do Oh no! They 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 they, they some travel down the coast is uh, right into the Gulf of Mexico to spawn. Wow! Um, uh, well, uh, Captain Dave, where are you right now? You you're not in a boat, right? right. Where are you? Uh, no, not not today. Not today. They got me doing these radio interviews all day long, <laughs> so I took the day off from fishing, and uh, I'm actually you know sitting in my driveway looking out in the yard, uh, just chatting with you guys on the phone. It's a nice <laughs> day here in New England. It's 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 almost eighty degrees today, so we're enjoying life. So, is it, uh, tell me about the weather. When when you do an episode and the weather gets bad, does that increase the ratings? Because I'm thinking the average viewer wants to see some tumultuous seas and all that. Yeah, you, I mean, for us, look, it's just another day at the office, whether it's good weather or bad weather. But obviously, for TV purposes. They're building that up. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Um, and, you know, I'm sure people like to see that part of our life. But, you know, look, is any day you see on TV, you know, in, in my real career is 30 years of, as a fisherman. I've already done that 100 days already before, you know? Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Wow. It's, but, you know, in the, TV, in the TV world, they play it up to get people to tune in, right? I, I, think you, I think you live an exciting life. I don't know if you view it that way, but it just looks that way from the outside looking in. Yeah, have you had anybody, a, a young person, saying, this is what I want to do for a living and, and uh, try to get on board and help you out? Oh, yeah, yeah. We, we, you know, I get a lot of questions about that. And, uh, you know, look, like I, I tell the kids all the time, like I told my own kids, who are on the boat with me. You see them fishing on the boat with me. Look, you know, when I graduated high school, like a lot of industries, you can make some good money fishing if you're willing to just go break your back and work up a sweat, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. But it's a different world these days, right? And, and fishing, because of all we've done, um, you know, we can't fish unlimited anymore. You know, back in the day, we didn't... You know, we didn't realize what we were doing, and overfishing was gotcha. a part of right. what we did, right? And now that part has changed. You know, as a country, we have to fish sustainably and fish responsibly, and we do that now, and we do a very good job at it. But what that means for guys like me who fish is I can't fish oftentimes all, every time I want to fish because I need money. I, You know, there's times when we can't fish because we have to make that balance between being sustainable and responsible and making money. So, you know, fishing has really become a part-time gig. And the most successful fishermen these days, you know, kind of have that, you know, you got to have a career. Go to college, get that degree, just right, like my right, kids. Right. You know, and kind of have that in your pocket and then explore the fishing industry because it's just not suited to go make a living in anymore. Wow, well said. And it's not because of, la- of lack of fish. <laughs> It's just because we have very strict controls on how much fish we can remove. And that means for uh, unstable income for someone like myself.
Oh, wow. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, well, National Geographic always does such a great job. Uh, Wicked Tuna uh, celebrating their 100th episode airing Sunday, June 24th, 9 p.m. Eastern Time on the National Geographic Channel. Uh, Captain Dave Marciano, it's an honor to speak to you again. Thank you for coming on the air with us. All right. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. We'll be right back. News Radio. I'm Chris Foster. President Trump says a legislative fix should follow his executive order ending the family separation policy for illegal immigrants. The House considers two immigration bills today, once considered a compromise. It not only solves the child separation issue at the border, it also solves the border. House Speaker Paul Ryan pointing the DACA provisions and border wall funding. A- 